folks. We're going to try to get Mr. Uh, Lewis's presentation is about a half an hour long, and I don't want you to miss it because it's really, really, very good. We're just kind of eating through the presentation and whatever, but I was also <coughs> reminded by Pam over here from Polaris. <coughs> Excuse me to remind everybody that they do have a a luncheon on March 10th at Polaris Career Center. And we've had them every year, we go back there. And if you've never been to their, the tour of their facility, and just for that luncheon, it's really, the food is one that's outstanding, because the, their culinary department makes the food. But number two is, it's an interesting facility. If you've never been to Polaris Career Center, I urge you to go. So I urge you to be there. <coughs> As I was driving over here this afternoon, in fact, one of the luxuries I give myself is the XM radio. Well, they have one of my favorite channels on XM radio is the book channel. You know, as I was driving over, the book channel had somebody who had wrote a biography of H.J. Hines, you know, the Hines ketchup guy. And what he did is he had a, a group of people in their sales department, and he wasn't really pleased by who people, what they were doing there in the sales department. And one day he walked in, and he said to the, the head of the department, never smiled. Never smiled at all. So he wasn't sure what to do, so he went back to his office. And he found one guy, though, that in that department that did smile. Well, the next week or so, that guy got a raise, an unexpected raise and a promotion. And when asked why he did that, he said, well, because I could pay for a smile, which is easy to do, but I can always find somebody to do the job of the work. But what he wanted to do was he was trying to say a smile was so important to his business, not only inside the business, but outside the business. When you made a, when you made a stranger smile, and that was the whole idea of what he was trying to do. There. So, and that's, and Heinz is now their multi-billion dollar company. But anyways, about, uh, that's my little commentary about the business. About three or four months ago, I was at, uh, at the Parma Chamber of Commerce, and they had this gentleman come in, his name is Sage Lewis, do this presentation on the media, especially the computer media and the networking that can be done. And I kind of sat there, I was sitting next to Chuck Germana, in just amazement about what is available out there and what's out there. Because I wasn't sure. You're looking at a guy who's won, I was telling somebody, Chuck showed me the other day for the first time what Facebook looked like. Um, <laughs> never been on Twitter, Lincoln, or any of those. Uh, and yet, this gentleman is going to tell us exactly what they are and how we can use them in our businesses. So, with no further ado, I'm going to introduce Sage Lewis. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am unbelievably delighted to be here. This topic is, I, I've been doing internet marketing since 1999. That's when we started our company. And one of the primary ways we would market our company is writing articles and speaking and that sort of thing. And within that decade of time, I can tell you without a doubt, I have never felt so cool in my life that this topic everybody wants to know about. You know, search engine optimization, they're like, oh yeah, that's kind of interesting, maybe. Oh, paid search, yeah, analytics, mm, yeah, very. But social media, you all come out to. And your presence here is an indication of the power. You are feeling the power of it. Who here has a Facebook account? Yes. And do you enjoy it? Do you use it for your families? Get to see pictures? My father, he lives in Colorado, does not like computers. He's a title agent. He loathed the day when he had to actually search titles on computers. Apparently he liked driving hundreds of miles to courthouses <laughs> to search titles. But no, he was like, oh, I have to go on the computer. But you know what? If he wants to see pictures of his grandson, he has to be on the Facebook. And you see, that's what happens, is that you say, oh, well, I don't want to be on this. I don't, I don't know. I'm not into that. But then people around you start talking about it. And they say, well, you know, I was on Facebook and I was talking to Mary. And you're like, wow, I know Mary. And, and then they start talking about this, this conversation they're having online. And then you talk about the pictures. Like, oh, I put all my, my, my uh, vacation pictures online <laughs> on Facebook. And it is this massive wave. 
There are over 500 million people on Facebook. It is massive. Has anybody here ever seen a YouTube video? YouTube video? Anybody care to share which one, the last one they saw? Anything good? This is for music videos all the time. Music videos. You know, that is nice. You know, whatever happened to music videos on TV? You know, they had MTV, I could watch the music video. Then they give me MTV 2, and I'm like, oh, good, I'll watch them over there. There's no videos over there. And I'm like, I just want to watch videos. <laughs> but now I can go to YouTube, I can watch the same video over and over and over again. Whenever I want. It's powerful. I want to show you a little YouTube video. This is a, a news story. I'm going to show you this real quick. A terrifying moment for a woman who woke up to a strange man in bed with her. The woman screamed. Her brother rushed in to help and tried to fight the offender off. That break-in happened early this morning in the 500 block of Webster Drive in Huntsville. WFF 48's Elizabeth Jello caught up with the victim. Elizabeth's emotions were running high. And Mark, the woman, the victim, tells us that a man broke into her house and tried to rape her. Her brother went in and he tried to help her out, but the man got away, leaving behind, though, evidence of his visit. Kelly Dodson was asleep with a little girl inside their apartment on Webster Drive when... So I was attacked by some idiot from out here in the projects. Dodson this is a real newscast, okay? He garbage can to climb onto the unit's ledge, open the upstairs window, and then he got in bed with her. He, he tried to rape me. He tried to pull my clothes off. Dodson struggled with her attacker, knocking over items in her bedroom. Antoine Dodson heard his sister scream and ran to help. Well... Obviously, we have a rapist in Lincoln Park. He's climbing in your windows. He's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So y'all need to hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband because they're raping everybody out here. The attacker got loose and went out the upstairs. Sort of funny, right? did leave something behind. We got your t-shirt. You done left fingerprints and all. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. A crime scene investigator photographed and dusted for prints on the lid of the garbage can and the window pane and ledge. Dodson says he's never seen the perp before, but sends this warning to whoever is responsible. You don't have to come and confess that you did it. We're looking for you. We, we gonna find you. I'm letting you know that so you can run and tell that, homeboy. Now, if you have any information okay. on this crime, you're so, Huntsville Police. So there's that. We'll have much more. Now, people are watching the news, and what, we happen, what happens now is something that's called a mashup. And we see this happening in all sorts of things. People will take music videos and, and they will, they'll, they'll, they'll put their, you know, their personal lives to the video. You know, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll lip sync the video. And we are having this happen. And what we're finding is that this is incredibly fascinating to people, viewers online. So we have this video, which led to one of the most viewed videos of 2010. 65 million views. A uh, rapist in Lincoln Park, he's climbing in your windows, he's snatching your people up, trying to rape them, so you need to hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband, cause they're raping everybody out here. You don't have to come and confess, we're looking for you, we don't find you. The man got away, leaving behind evidence. I was attacked by some idiot in the project. So dumb, so dumb, so dumb, so dumb. He's climbing your windows, he's snatching your people up, trying to rape them. So you need to hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your kids, hide your wife, and hide your husband. Cause they're raping everybody out here. You don't have to come and confess. We're looking for you. We gon' find you. We gon' find you. So you can run and tell that, run and tell that, run and tell that. Oh boy, oh 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 boy. He's climbing your windows. He's snatching your people up. So you need kind of kids, kind of wife. Cause men 
Cause he's ripping that body out there Subscribe, and most importantly, have a great day. Lyrics. So what does this mean? One of the most viewed videos on YouTube in 2010 is this. I don't really know what it means, honestly. But what I can guess is that we are living in an era that people are, are getting their voices heard. You see, up until this decade, we all went home and watched the 6.30 news, and we had Tom Brokaw feeding us the news that we were supposed to think was important. And by and large, it was very important. And we still, to that day, to this day, do that. Just Actually, I saw Tom Brokaw last night. Still around. But now, what we are finding is people are getting a vote about what they think is important and entertaining. And the votes become important. You uh, guys been reading about this, uh, this these, these logo, everybody's up in arms about the Gap logo, have you heard of this? And now everybody's up in arms about the new Starbucks logo. Everybody is outraged because Gap changed their logo to something that was, I don't know, they were like I, you just hear so many things about it like a sixth grader could have done. I think a sixth grader could have done the original, personally. The Starbucks is now getting rid of the word coffee because apparently they want to branch out into more things. I don't know, tea. Coffee is limiting to them. I don't know what they want to get involved in. But they've removed the outer rim that says Starbucks coffee and now just have that mermaid lady. People were outraged. Now, so far Starbucks has not gone back to their logo, but the Gap did. The Gap went back to the original logo because there was so much outrage. Over a decade ago, Thomas Friedman wrote a book called The World is Flat. Anybody ever read that? Profound book, right? And he was talking about the flattening of the world. And, and, and uh, he believed that it started at, the, at the, uh, the fall of the Berlin Wall. That was the beginning of the flattening. And that was a decade ago. And now what we see is that flattening continues to progress and potentially even could, I could even see concave. The, the idea was before this flattening, there was hierarchy. There was from the top down. But now, we have people, right or wrong, having a very powerful voice in dictating what they want to see and what they want to happen. You know, any time in history you could have read a marketing book and a marketing book would have told you, you know what, you should listen to your customers. Listen to them. Because they're going to tell you how to run your, you know, what you need to do in your business. And you went home and you're like, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. And if you did it, you did it. If you didn't, you didn't. You could be a scoundrel. You know, you could lie, cheat, and steal your customers. But it was pretty hard for people to really find out. What are they going to do? Write a letter to the editor? They're going to write a letter to you, cursing you out. And what do you care? You just wad that thing up and throw it in the trash. Now, they do videos. They write blog posts. Let me show you this. And yeah, we'll get to him, don't worry. <laughs> Here, with a mere 1.5 million views, a Comcast technician sleeping on my couch.
I don't believe it's any longer the case, but for a long time, for years, literally years, this was in the top results of Google when you typed in Comcast. This video. And what happens is, you know, that's bad enough. But then, if you scroll down, you can start reading the comments. And so, um, you can just start, like, people start corroborating about like, yeah, I had the worst, you know, uh, you know, anyone pays for this STV is a mystery to me. Uh, this is for the people who like 4G wire. I don't know. It goes on and on. So it's not only just that person. Now this person who has, has gotten its voice, their voice shown, this is a platform for other people to just pile on you. What I'm here to tell you is those books that you read about listening to your customers were right then, but they are necessary today. Because the world has flattened. And this person here, who could have never bought 1.6 million views on, on the cheapest late night cable TV, is getting it for free here. And it sits here day after day, month after month, year after year, and there's nothing Comcast can do about it. Except maybe try and become a better customer, a co company. But this is nothing. This guy, 9.8 million views. Let me tell you a quick little story about David. David, David Carroll, ever heard of him? No, right? Nobody. Well, he's a musician. He's a country musician. And he was traveling somewhere for a little gig, doing his little job, doing his little life. And he checked his Taylor guitar, $1,800 Taylor guitar, in the hold. He looks out the window, and he sees a baggage handler throwing his guitar. He freaks. And he goes to the stewardess and says, excuse me, I think they're throwing around our guitars out there. And she's like, mm, I'm sorry, that's not really my problem. You need to go you know, up the ramp, talk to the people at the desk. He goes up the ramp, talks to the people at the desk. They're like, oh, not really my problem. You have to talk to the people at the front. And he does this. He does this over and over and over again until finally somebody says, look, sir, you have complained to the wrong people at the wrong time. No money for you. And so... That pushed him over the edge, and he did this. So this is it. 
This is a world that we live in. A guy you've never heard of. He's now selling CDs like crazy. Because he's taken this video and it went viral. And this is how it happens. It happens every time like this. Somebody does something clever or funny and then it goes viral online. Meaning people start, you know, they, they send it to Facebook, they send it to Twitter, people send it around to their friends. And then it gets picked up by a big blogger like Perez Hilton or something. And then it moves into the mainstream blogs like the Huffington Post. And then it jumps. It jumps from offline from online to offline and then it hits the national news and it hits the New York Times, it hits the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal and Brian Williams is talking about United breaking guitars. This makes, this stuff is on the national news. This is the world that we live in. Now, most of us here are not going to be participating in something so viral. Although, do you guys remember down in, I think it was Stark County, there was a treasurer? Uh, I don't have the video, but this guy was crazy. He was, I mean, you think I'm crazy. This guy was a nut. And his video, he was trying to become treasurer. He was just trying to get the, uh, 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 you know, he was, he just was, was trying to run for being able to run. And, and he did this really wild speech and it went viral and got millions of views. And so you never know. I mean, you do have this, this possibility of something happening that it does kind of go out of control. Um, and these examples are examples that, you know, these are, these are kind of the, the bad examples. But this can be used as a benefit to your company. And while the uh, Antoine, or whatever that guy's name was with the, uh, you know, hide your kids, hide your wife, that was one of the top videos. This was also one of the top videos. 28 million views from Old Spice. Hello, ladies. Look at your man. Now back to me. Now back to your man. Now back to me. Sadly, he isn't me. But if he stops using ladies scented body wash and switch to Old Spice, he could smell like he's me. Look down. Back up. Where are you? You're on a boat with the man your man could smell like. What's in your hand? Back in me. I am. It's an oyster with two tickets to that thing you love. Look again. The tickets are now diamond. Anything is possible when your man smells like Old Spice and not a lady. I'm on a horse. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's about. It's so weird. But people loved it. And so we see these things happening more and more. And then he went through and, and he would answer questions. People would write in questions and he would do video responses. They were able to really spin this up. So the era that we're in is drastically changing. And I was a little hesitant, especially showing you the first video of the guy with the auto-tuned voice, because I thought that might really kind of be like, whoa, this is crazy weird. But I felt, I mean, somebody, people had brought it up before the, the, the lunch. So people had seen it. And I felt it was also interesting to show you because it makes a point in that this movement is continuing to move. It is continuing to evolve. And as I've seen in all web marketing, the longer you wait, the harder it is to jump in later on in the game. In paid search, for example, I don't know if you're in, you know, if you've done any search engine marketing, they have sponsored listings on the right hand side and you pay per click. Well, if you're trying to jump in in the financial game or the insurance game right now, you're looking at 10, 12, 11 dollars per click. Every time somebody clicks on your listing, it costs you th like 10 or 11 dollars in certain cases. And that is incredibly difficult to just jump into. Because you have all these people that have been doing it for the last 10 years, and they know how to convert at those numbers because they've been honing their system. 
Now, the question I get so often is, do I have to be here? And the answer, in my opinion, is no. If you look at this stuff and you're like, oh, Sage, this thing makes my head spin. This, I don't understand this. This stuff is crazy. I never want to, you know, I work on a computer all day. I don't want to do this. Then you shouldn't do it. You know the person, you know, you drag your friend to a party. You're like, come on, let's go to the party. And they're like, I don't want to go to the party. Come on, it'll be fun. I don't want to go to the party. And then they drag them into the car. They throw them in the car and they throw them into the party. And they're just grumpy the whole time. Sometimes they come around. I mean, that does happen. You're like, oh, the party doesn't stink. But sometimes they're just there grumpy. And if you're going to be that way in social media, like, oh, that's sage. You told me to be in social media. I think this is stupid. You're... You're not going to be, you shouldn't be there because it's going to exude. You're going to just go there to push product. If you're in social media just to push product, you shouldn't be there because it's not called business media, it's called social media. This was not invented for businesses. This was invented by a geek Many multiple geeks, but I'm thinking of Facebook. Did you guys see the social media, whatever, social media, what is that called? Social network, thank you, yeah. I mean, it's just a kid in his dorm room putting together things to hang out with his friends. That's what this is. I was talking to uh, Phil here, Phil Kish, and he summed it up, I thought, very well. He's like, you know, Sage, I was at your Parma event, and I will say, if you go to one more, you officially become a groupie and you will get a t-shirt. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So I look forward to you at the next event. He said, you know, Sage, what dawned on me was, this isn't about Facebook. This isn't about Twitter and YouTube and LinkedIn. This is about marketing. Just like the yellow pages. Just about like buying ads. This is, a, this is a medium. Do you see this room here? We have 40 some people in this room. It's this. It's networking. It is, a, it, is a, it is a way to interact with people. And it may be right for you. It may not be right for you. And that's totally cool. I will say there are two things I want you to do. The first thing is, I want you to monitor this, okay? I'm going to tell you a secret. You can't tell anybody out of this room. Because I didn't, I, I'm not talking about this in social media, but there's a guy in Michigan with my name that is going to prison for, like, doing something bad to an underage girl. That's... That is crazy, okay? My name, Sage Lewis. I'm not a 19-year-old person that lives in Michigan, I gotta say. And I'm not in jail right now, which is he is. So, so it's not me, but I'm telling you I'm watching this because if it goes national, I gotta jump on it. I can't just let people think I'm a guy in Michigan doing terrible things to underage kids. Now, I'm not going to talk about it now because it's been staying in Michigan. It's been staying in the Michigan news. He wasn't really the main guy. There was a 44-year-old guy that they're really hammering. But I need to know this, okay? You need to know this about your name and about your company. You can go to a place like search.twitter.com. You can sign up with something like Google Alerts. You can put in, these are free. You can put in your company name. You can put in your personal name. And whenever those things come up, you'll get an email. I want you to do that. I'm not saying you have to start making funny videos, but I want you to be aware of what's going on in social media about your brand names and your personal name. The other thing I want you to do is if you have employees, I want you to have a policy. 
It doesn't have to be brain surgery. It can be something as simple as, don't be stupid, but you need to have a policy. I spoke at one of the largest HR companies all day, all day about social media. I told them about it, the whole training thing. At the end of the day, they stood up and said, Sage, thank you very much. You will all now be getting the social media policy, which is you will never, ever, in any way, ever mention our company's name. Ever. I'm like, why was I here all day? I mean, couldn't we just cut to the chase? Be like, never use our name in social media. Working for a large telecommunications company, and I was searching their stuff on Flickr. Do you guys know Flickr? Flickr is a... Is a, is a photo sharing site, right? And I started, I typed in their name and kitty cat pictures started coming up. Little pictures about, you know, like at, at fairs and stuff. And I'm like, why are kitty cat pictures and pictures at the fair coming up? And what happened was there was an executive of this company that was emailing pictures to Flickr through their phone and their signature was attached to everyone. They came up for every crazy thing. Worked for one of the largest ball bearing companies in the world. The largest. We went to Flickr. And I said, hey, type in your company name. Here's all your ball bearings. There were pictures of the headquarters, inside the headquarters, parties. This was executives. Their mouths just dropped. And the one guy, all he could say was, not one of those is the 10 approved pictures. <laughs> You need to know what's going on. You just need to know. You need to let people know about this stuff. Maybe you have a meeting with your employees about privacy settings. You could say, hey, look, you can friend our clients on Facebook. Cool. But don't have your privacy settings. So, I mean, set it up so they can't see the beer bong party you went to last night. Because that's not selling stuff for us. <laughs> Unless you're into beer bongs, which maybe it was, I don't know. You, I want you to have a policy for your organization, and I want you to be aware of what is going on. Just know what's happening. And if you want to do this stuff, people say, well, where do I start? How far do I get in? If you're, if you're scared of this, one of the greatest places to start is LinkedIn. LinkedIn is for business. Go to LinkedIn. You probably have been collecting whatever they call them. What do they call them? Friends? Connections or something over there? You've probably been collecting them for years, right? Have you ever gotten those like, Bob Smith wants to connect to me on LinkedIn? And they're like, all right. And you, and you do it? Well, I'm here to tell you, if you've been doing that, you can go into LinkedIn in the email section, and there are two ways to target in there. You can target by region and by industry. It's awesome. All your LinkedIn connections have been demographically cut up for you in LinkedIn. So you could say, hey, I want all the marketing people in Northeastern Ohio. I want to tell them about a, you know, a class I'm teaching. You can send 50 emails at a time for free. That's a great place to start. I'm also a huge fan of blogging. I like people to have blogs on their websites. I like that because you control everything. The content is on your website. If somebody comments, you have complete control over it. Sorry, I keep looking at my watch. There's so much I want to tell you, but I'm running out of time. I'll leave you with this. My father-in-law, 35 years traveling salesman, sold plastic conveyor belts most of those years. Industrial sales, okay? Got in the car Monday morning, came home Friday night for 35 years, selling plastic conveyor belts. I said, Earl, why the heck did you do that? He's like, well, I like to get out of the house. And he said, you know what, Sage? I don't care what you sell. People buy from who they know and who they like. So people often say to me, oh, social media isn't right for my industry. If your industry has people, if you're selling to people, 
I don't know of an industry that it's not right for. It might not be right for you individually, which I'm totally cool with. But if my father-in-law drove around this country for 35 years selling plastic conveyor belts, it's about people. And this is what this is about. Connecting to people in the way they want to be connected to. Communicating to people in the way they want to be communicated to. This is only going to increase. And the reason I think it's only going to increase is because this gives people power. It gives people the ability to make these crazy videos, to have their say, to have their words heard nationally and internationally. There is no way that I can see that this movement is going to stop. Facebook may come or go, I don't know. But this is not going to stop. And so as you move along in your businesses, realize that the, the movers, the decision makers, are going to be the people that they're going to get, you know, the young kids now are going to be the bosses of tomorrow. And, as Phil said, a lot of times they're the people digging up the information for researching. Right now, those are the people, they're looking, you know, their boss sends them out and says, hey, go look up office furniture. And what do they do? They type in office furniture. And Phil comes up. That's right, he does. So, keep this in mind. Please, have a policy, be aware of what people are saying, and then go from there. All right, I've overstepped my bounds, I think. Is there, are there any questions? Yeah. Could you show, at the time you showed the Google website, that just about everybody has. Yeah, <laughs> I know, okay. This is, um, what you need to understand is, that if I type in pizza right now, oops, sorry, I did mean pizza. <laughs> so smart. Okay. All right. Yeah, it never works the way you want it to. Okay. So I'm going to type in Cleveland pizza. Oh, what's the matter? You know these. Uh, they just never want. They never. Uh, you, you're in the middle of a conference. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I know, I know. So at any rate, normally this works. I don't know why, just because I think Google thinks this is funny to, you know, call me during a presentation. But you type in pizza, you type in office furniture, Phil comes up in what's called the local listings, okay? We know that 20% of searches, one in five searches are local in nature. Google has made a huge push in this. What I want you to do is I want you to maybe go to like Google Maps, for example, and I want you to type in your company name. Like, uh, okay, hold on. So, Hampt oh, perfect, let's do it, let's do it, hold on. Okay, Hampton in Hampton. It's, yep. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's so sleepy, my computer. Hampton in, uh, Brook. Okay, Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Ohio. Okay. So what, you, what, what I want you to do here is, you can see that this is, I think this is it right here, right? Hampton in Cleveland Airport, Tiedemann Road. Is that probably this one? Okay. I want you to do that for your business. Like I would type in Sage Rock, Akron, Ohio. And then I want you to go and click on this listing here. And actually if you click on the more info button, what this is going to do is this is going to take you to your Google Places listing. And you can also get here by going to google.com slash places. Google is trying to index every single business pretty much worldwide. This goes on in South America, Europe, everywhere. These listings are becoming more and more prevalent. And as Bill can tell you, I mean, he is, this listing is the listing that people see first. And the other thing about it is we have reviews. That's why people like it. User-generated reviews, it goes back to that power. People are able to communicate. 
and tell you their experiences. We know people will pay more for a well-reviewed product or service than a cheaper, less well-reviewed product or service. People trust these. And this is only going to continue. The goal is they want to show you the reviews of your friends in Facebook. They want to say, hey, Bob Smith, your dear friend, he was over here at the Hampton Inn, he wrote a review, and so they've started something called Hot Pot. Google Hot Pot. I don't know where they came up with that name, but they're trying actively to get people to review businesses. Four out of five stars, pretty darn good. All right, so it says here at Hotels.com, the staff at this hotel were great. Our promise to you includes a clean, comfortable room. They were attentive, but not intrusive. Good job, good job. So, um, now, we know that sites that are oftentimes reviewed more sometimes percolate to the top. So, potentially, you could, have a, you could have a thing at the front desk here at the Hampton Inn that says, hey, if you had a great visit, maybe you could go to our listing at Hotels.com and write a quick review. Or go to our, our um, Google Maps place because it has a link. There's a link here that you can give to people. You know they're going to have a great experience. It's the only place I sleep at is Hampton Inns because they're awesome. So, you know, I mean, you want to build up on that. So please go here. And you can see it's owner verified, meaning they have claimed their business. This is the one thing that I would like you to do. You want to claim your business. If you don't claim your business, anybody can come over and close your business, change your phone number, move your marker, change your address. An unverified business is open to the public. As soon as you verify your business, you can do it one of two ways, either through a phone call or a postcard they send to you. It's yours and nobody else can touch the details of it. They can write, re excuse me, they can write reviews, but they can't, they can't do anything further with that. So, uh, yes, sir. Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is go and look for your business here. Yeah, so you go to Google Maps. Now, because Hampton is owner verified, we can't edit this one. But let's see, like if I do, um, let me go back here real quick. Uh, one second, let's see. So, let me see if, yeah, it's still not working. So you do this, like you go to Gillespie's Map Room. They sell pizza there? Anybody? Great place for a beer and a slice. Okay. You can click on the reviews, and here, here is a perfect one that is not verified. And I know instantly because it says business owner question mark. And what I can do is, there you go. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. I can click on that word business owner, and it'll take me into this, and it will allow me to verify my listing here. You can also get there by going to google.com slash places. Okay? And so what you can do here is you can see, do you see this? I can suspend this listing as a as a anonymous person. I can say, look, this place is closed down. You know, and if I had a heated debate with one of my, you know, I was, I was in this contentious war, pizza, and I'm sick of this Gillespie guy beating me out in the Google, maybe I'd uh, suspend his listing, see if I could shut it down. You do not want to be in that kind of position. You click edit your business, you continue here, the next page is, it asks you to verify your, your, your address, your phone number, and then the next position is, after this page, at that point, it comes out, you can, you know, you can put in a description, your, your, your website, and then you get to the next page, and if you haven't changed the phone number, okay, if the phone number that they had in here was the same phone number that, that is correct, it'll say, do you want to verify by phone? And as long as that phone is not part of a system, meaning it doesn't go directly into a, like a voicemail system, because what will happen is you press verify by phone and Google instantly calls you. And they give you a, a PIN number, a four or five digit PIN. And you push that, you get that number, you enter your PIN number, 
And that's it. It's your business. You can upload videos. You can upload pictures. You can add uh, coupons, specials. It gives you stats of how many people are coming to your listings. It gives you a tremendous amount of capability. Yeah. We'll take one question because we got to get. If you find that somebody has put something negative yes. on your social network, yes. is there, are there any options for you to, other than responding to fixing that? Um, rarely not. If they are libeling you, if they are saying something that is not true, if they are saying something that is, is, is uh, verifiably false, you can submit that. But what you have to understand is these reviews aren't just coming from Google. Google is aggregating reviews from all over the web. So, so like for Hotels.com, if there was a bad review on Hotels.com, he would have to go to Hotels.com and, and, and deal with that. For a long time, you couldn't even respond. But now we're seeing more and more sites allowing you to respond. This is a great opportunity for you, incidentally, to show, I mean, every business has problems. You always make mistakes. You can't not make a mistake. But what you can do is how you deal with the mistake. That's the key. So this can be a great opportunity. Somebody could write a bad review, and they could say, oh, look, I'm really sorry that happened to you. I won't let this happen again. I remember you. This was a terrible situation. Please come back in, and I'll give you this, I'll give you that, and we'll make it right. And, and you can turn it around. Lemon into lemonade. Well, I would think all of you would agree that we've had a great presentation. So. Thank you. Now, now, Sage has up here some business cards that you'd like to, or if you can come up and ask some questions and we'll, we'll, we'll go with the lunch. And if you like that as a business card or whatever, and if you'd like to maybe bring them to your business or whatever to show you how to, maybe you can protect yourself from a lot of this stuff. I don't know, because it was interesting to see the people writing, taking these notes about their small businesses. Because I think you got to go on Google and find out what's on there and not about you or whatever. But he's here to help. He'll be here for a little bit longer. So remember, we hope to see you at the Mega Mixer. And we'll see you next month at Carabas. And so thank you very much for all for coming, folks. Hey, thank you so much. Oh, no. I, that, I tried to explain to somebody that. They couldn't believe me. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's uh, yeah, it's true. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Let's just say, for example, say I put in a name. Like, like say, I want to find out something about... Uh, I put my own name. Yeah. Can I can I find out that someone's been searching for me? Um, that probably not. Not not like unless they came to a website. Now, if they came to your website, so they type in your name and they come to a website of yours, you would be able to see that through your stats of your own website. But not unfortunately. Because yeah, you know you, you don't know. Because you might say, geez, I wonder if that girlfriend of mine is. Yeah. I wonder if she's doing. Well, yeah, see, well, were they searching for you or not? Yeah. You can't tell. You can't tell. No. Yeah, they kind of protect it. Yep. Yep. Hey, All buddy, right. we're gonna have a.